Well, hello. It's me again, Susan, coming at you from Strength Studio here in Seattle. And uh, I hear maybe you guys want a little bit more workout. So I'm back with some more. Are you ready for it? Let's get started. Alrighty. You're gonna need a few extra things today. First of all, I want you to make sure that you've spoken with a doctor, which I'm sure you have in some form recently, and you are cleared to be moving your body and exercising. It's usually what's best for all of us, but you know your body, so listen to your body and do what feels right to you, and don't do what doesn't feel right. Make modifications, adjust, take a break when you need to, but let's just see what we can do to keep our bodies moving, especially during this really challenging time. Today, you will need a few extra things. Are you ready for this? You will need some sort of a small ball. If you don't have a ball, you could use a small pillow, a stuffed animal, something that you can put some pressure on that's roughly about this size. It could be a little bit bigger if you need to. You will also, if you have it, need some sort of a stick. It could be a wooden dowel, perhaps a broomstick, a mop stick. This is actually a lightly weighted bar, something that has a little bit of length that you could use like this. You can need some sort of dumbbells if you want to add some resistance. I'm just using a nice two pounds. Maybe you want three pounds or even one. If you don't have dumbbells at home, that's fine. There's always an option. You can use water bottles. It's always going to have water nearby. Anyhow, you're going to need that. You could use cans of soup. Look around your house and be creative and see what you can find to add a little bit of weight to some of these exercises. It's always good to add a little bit of weight varying in your work. Also, a resistance band. Some of you might have one that looks like this, a TheraBand that's long and stretchy, or you might have this type of band. If you have some sort of a band, that would be great. Maybe you even have a bungee cord out in the garage that would give you some stretch too. If you don't have that, that's fine. You can get the same effect by putting a light dumbbell in each hand. So I'll show you options for that. But if you have one of these bands, that's great. If you don't, it'd be a great thing to get your hands on someday if you can. You will also need a couple items that you can step over. I have these hurdles. Life is full of hurdles, isn't it? Well, my studio is full of hurdles too, so I happen to have three hurdles. Most likely you don't have hurdles at home. That's fine. Maybe you could find three books. Just something that you could safely step over. Maybe three cans of soup on the floor. Something that gives you a little bit of a hurdle to step over. That's for later. And lastly, you will need a chair, either with arms or without arms that we can for various exercises and also just for stability. I also like that you're close to a wall. We're going to use the wall in the workout, but it's also great to just have something to tap in, to check in for balance if you need to. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to take a break when you need it. And let's do this. Let's get started, shall we? Why don't you just get started moving? We're going to walk a little bit and just get those bodies kind of warmed up. I'm going to talk to you while we're doing that. So let's just, we're just going on a little walk here. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of warm. And then we're going to work on a little bit of flexibility because we all know how important that is. Then we'll do our little bit of strength training. We'll get the upper body and the lower body with a lot of moves. We'll tackle a little bit of balance exercises, get those arms moving some balance. And then we'll finish with a little, little adventure to just really get you moving and get your heart pounding a little bit. How does that sound? Does that sound good? Let's the foot out and the foot out. It's kind of like we're dancing here, right? That's how we do the Charleston. Let's just get moving. Maybe your movie looks like this. That's absolutely fine too. You don't have to make it like a dance, but if you want to, I'm always up for a little dancing, right? I just want to get you a little bit moving before we take it into a little flexibility work, right? We're going to walk. Let's march a little bit more. How are you feeling right now? I want you to take note of how you feel right now. And then at the end of your workout, how do you feel that? I would be willing to bet that you're going to feel better by the time you've moved your body for a little while. It really does make all the difference, especially right now if you're stuck at home, right? I got you. We'll keep it coming. Alrighty. Are we ready to start a little flexibility work? Body's been moving a little bit. Okay. I'm going to want you to get that chair. We're going to start seated. Find that chair. Have a seat. Again, if your chair has arms, that's totally fine. If you don't, that's fine too. I want you to sit nice and tall. Really pull your belly in. Send that belly button right back into your spine, sitting super tall. And I want to start with this. Cross your arms over like this, like you're the Venus de Milo, right? <laughs> Statue, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Here's what I want you to do. Holding them across the front of you like this, I want you to reach using just your shoulders. You don't have arms right now. Using just your shoulders, I want you to reach up, like you're trying to reach something high on the ceiling. 
Maybe a balloon exploded up there and you're trying to reach that balloon string. Reach for it, reach. Let's try the other side. Reach, just using your shoulder. Reach higher, get that balloon. Can you get it? There's a crying child in that balloon. Reach, reach. Okay, now I want you to reach forward with that shoulder because you're gonna grab something off that table. Reach, sit nice and tall. Reach with your shoulder. Can you reach it? Let's try the other side. Big reach with your shoulder. Can you get it? Huh. Let's reach back. You wanna grab something back in the back seat of the car. Reach back with that shoulder. Really use that shoulder to stretch it out. Do you feel a nice strength? Stretching right through the ribs right there. Yeah, that's great. And now reach the other shoulder back to the other side. Reach back. Big reach. Big reach. Okay, now I want you to extend your arm up. Like you're going to reach up to grab that balloon. Extend your arm up and grab that balloon. Now I want you to think about using that shoulder again like we just did. Reach with that, balloon, with that shoulder. Extend that shoulder. Do you see how that extends your reach? Quite a bit further, doesn't it? Let's try the other side. Now reach. For that balloon, now using that shoulder, big extension, big extension of that shoulder. Just using that shoulder for the lift is gonna give you a lot more distance. Let's reach forward and then reach using that shoulder. Big extension, using that shoulder. Yeah, and the other hand. So you put it here, but then you reach leading with that shoulder and it takes it much further. You can get something that's further away and same with back, reach back and reach leading with that shoulder. Great. Now, if any time any of these feel uncomfortable on your body, don't do them. But just notice the difference when you think about reaching through the shoulder, not just the reach. Here's your reach. Here's your reach with the shoulder. It can go a lot further. Great. Okay, same thing. Now, if you want to do this one standing, you can, or you can just stay seated. I want you to turn your head to the right. Now, take your eyes and look even further to the right. Did your head follow? Uh-huh, let's just hold it there for a second. Okay, let's take it to the left. Turn your head to the left. Now take your eyes even further. Did your head follow and go further? Yeah, there's a big connection with your eyes. When you look with your eyes where you want it to go, that's where it will go. So now you can extend your arm, right? Bring it out. Put your eyes on the palm of your hand. Yes, look at it and follow it back and follow it. Big stretch. Really opens up that chest, a nice long stretch across there and pull. Same on the other side. Follow it with your eyes and keep following that open palm and reach. Working that flexibility, reaching all the way to the back. Great. Can you go even a little bit further? Yes, when you use your eyes to look at where you want it to go, it makes you turn it a little bit deeper. Great, let's work on flexibility in those hips, in those hip flexors. Let's pull up, can you get back, back in the back of your chair? Pull up one knee, give a little hug, pull. Nice hug and pull. Great, lifting with that hip flexor right in here. And pull, back against the chair. Great, and holding it, and holding it. And you can sit and hold these as long as you need to. We'll keep moving because we need to. Now you're gonna do this one, you might have to give it a little help, lift it up, cross it over, and hold. Nice stretch right through here. Stretching makes it more flexible. Right, better range of motion when you're flexible. Really important, especially as we age, to maintain that flexibility. And the other side, cross it over. You might need to assist it. And give it a little bit of a pull up because you're good stretching right along for here. Great. How's that feeling? So far, so good. Feeling stretchy? Great. Okay, let's go with that inner thigh. So maybe move a little bit forward to the front. And why don't you just take it in and out for just a little bit, in and out, just to kind of get it moving in and out. Sitting so again in that chair, you're sitting nice and tall. Pull that belly button into your spine, stomach's nice and tight. Tapping these in and out. Now let's take one out and apply a little bit of pressure. This one stays right in front of you. Give it a little bit of a push. You get a great little stretch along here. Increase that flexibility by lengthening, strengthening that muscle, and stretching it. Just put enough pressure that you can feel a little bit of a tug, but not too much. It shouldn't be uncomfortable. 
You should just be aware of it. Great. And let's hit the other side and push and hold it just with enough pressure that you can feel it, but not where it's uncomfortable. Great. Keeping that flexible, keeping your inner thigh, your hips, your hip flexors flexible will be critical. Okay, we're gonna do a little gentleman's bend. I want you one leg out straight, sit right on the edge of your chair, nice and tall. Again, pull that belly in. Other foot is right here. With this foot, toe pointed up, sit as tall as you possibly can. And I want you just to tilt, lean forward into it. Don't bend, stay nice and tall like a proper bow and lean in. You should feel a nice lengthening, strengthening, holy grip with the back of that leg, the hamstring. Keeping your hamstrings flexible is critical. That's often tied to back issues for people. So if your hamstrings are tight, your back is gonna to tend to be like this. So this hamstring stretch will be really, really important to do. I would be doing it every single day. Switch again, and again, the critical thing, I'll turn sideways so you can see this, is that you're sitting nice and tall as you lean in. If you come to here, you're gonna lose the, the pull. We wanna fix that flexibility, right? Not, not make it worse, nice and tall. Great. Okay, this next one's for the hip flexor. That's this right here, which we use for every step that we take. So this is a little more tricky, but you're gonna sit sideways on that chair. Hold on to the back of that chair. One foot is planted right in front of you. This back foot, this one might be uncomfortable for you, but give it a go. If it doesn't work for you, that's fine too. Put your foot upside down on the floor like this and let this knee drop. Holding on to your chair. Just let that knee drop towards the floor. You have a nice stretch right through here. Lean back a little bit. Make sure you're holding on to that chair, right? Nice hip flexor stretch. Great. After the video, you might want to come back and do some of these again. Because stretching is so key for that flexibility and for strength. So letting that knee drop towards the floor, holding on to that chair. Lean back a little bit. Feel a little more of a stretch right through here. Great, and just hold that. Great, keeping that flexibility will be critical. Let's take those arms overhead, grab onto your wrist, and give it a little pull. Keeping those shoulders flexible so you can reach, do all the activities that you like to do, and holding that there. Make sure you're giving a little bit of a pull. Don't pull yourself off the chair, but just enough of a pull. And we'll try the other side. Hold and hold. Great. If that's comfortable for you, that's great. Okay, we're going to be like a little sunburst here. Palms are up. Arms start right here. Let's bring it up, up, up. Maybe your range of motion stops here, but if you can keep going, keep going. Can you bring it back down to here? Great. Feel a nice stretch and pull all the way across your chest. When I say pull, I mean that in a positive sense. Not a pull where it hurts, but you can just feel that those muscles are stretching, which is going to increase the flexibility of your chest. And just hold that there. Great, okay, let's go for that neck. Again, sitting nice and tall. I want you to put your two fingers right here on your chin. Bring your chin down, down, down to your neck. Give it a little gentle pressure and hold it. You should feel right up through here, up through the back of your neck, those muscles, and hold on. We need to be able to keep range of motion in our head, right? How else are we gonna say, yes, I would like a second serving, please, if we don't keep that. So use these fingers and push down on that chin and hold it down, hold it down, and hold it. Keep breathing through that. Don't forget to breathe. Great. Those are things that you can do to improve your flexibility. You can do those every day. You can just come back to this video and just watch that part to improve that flexibility because for longevity, that will be critical. Are you ready for a little bit of strength training? The lips and muscle? Alrighty, let's do this. We're going to start with a squat. Now, if you want to be standing when you start, that's fine. If you have your chair nearby, that's great too. And here's how you're going to do this. Open up those feet a little bit wider than your hips. Yes? And you're just going to pretend like you're sitting in a chair. You wouldn't go straight down to get into a chair. You would sit back to sit into that chair. So let's try that. Sitting down and back. Push your weight into your heels and down 
and up. Really wiggle those toes a little bit. Leave them on the floor, but I want the pressure to be going through your heels. Just like that. And then up, and down, and then up. Great. How deep are you going to go? This is plenty. Just want to make sure that those knees are staying back behind your toes. Don't let them rock forward. Nice squat. This is great for the legs, great for the glutes, great for the hips. Let's take it up a notch. Let's go to that chair. Let's step those feet out a little bit. If you have the arms of your chair, you can hold on for help. Otherwise, push up and stand. When you come up, push through your heels to stand up. Stand up. Core is tight. Stomach is nice and tight. Sit to stand. Stand up. Great. That's a motion that we do all the time, right? So maybe you need a little bit of help to get out of that chair. So you might want to lean back a little bit and then rock forward to your stand. Just really protect those knees, right? And put your hands back down so you know that the chair is there when you're done. Sit to stand. Sit to stand. Great. Alrighty. Do you find that ball or that little pillow that you needed? Let's go get it. Go grab that item. Take her here, I want you to put it right between your knees like this and give it a good little squeeze. You should feel those inner thigh muscles tighten as you do that. So your feet are quite a bit closer together this time. And I just want you to sit down and up as you're squeezing on that ball or that pillow or what else could it be, a sack of flour. Whatever you found in your house that you could squeeze. Maybe a stuffed animal left by a grandchild. Who knows? Sitting down and back. Maybe your own stuffed animal. I know I still have a lot of mine. Sitting down and up. Squeezing, pushing, back. Sliding those hips back. And still squeezing. Really still squeezing. Don't let that ball fall out. If it falls out, well, pick it up and put it back in. How are those legs feeling right about now? Getting tired? Alrighty, great. Let's take it back to that chair, put your ball down. I want you to sit up nice and tall at the very back of your chair. I want you to cross one foot over the other and you're going to just bend and extend. One foot crossed over, bend and extend. Sit nice and tall again, tall in that chair. You should be able to feel these quad muscles right here on the top of your leg really working to lift that leg and that leg extension. The nice crossover. Great. You're doing awesome. Let's switch leg feet so the other one is on top now. And extend and bend. Now obviously if you have a taller chair, you're gonna get a bigger range of motion before your feet come to the ground, right? That would be, yeah, that's great. The more range of motion, the better. And even if you're in a lower chair, you can still see how these leg muscles right here are getting their work. For sure. Nice. Okay, do you have that band we talked about? If you have a band, go get it. If you don't have a band, you're still going to do these same motions just without the band, and you're still going to get a lot of benefit from it. So if you have a band, if there are a band like this or the other kind, you get that under your foot. Sometimes that's the hardest part, right? Hold on to the ends. Sometimes you can tie a knot or wrap it around your wrist. Or if you have a good grip, just hold on to it and press out and pull it in. And press out and pull it in. Press out and having that resistance of pressing it. Now, if you don't have the band, keep going. If you do, if you don't, I still want you to press, drive it through your heel, drive through your heel as if you had that band. Are you at the back of the chair? Is your core nice and tight? And press. And press. And press. See, it's challenging even without the band. So if you are using that band, well done. Let's switch legs. I'm going to put that band back on there. Wow. Big press. Bring it in. Big press. Great. Yeah, adding a little resistance makes the work a little bit harder. And maybe you're not ready to start with the band, but you can work your way up to the band. And just starting with nothing is just fine. You know what the key is? Just starting. Just doing something to get moving, right? Sitting tall again, I caught you slouching there. Big extend, big extend. Those legs start to get pretty heavy, pretty fast, don't they? Okay, let's go back to the other foot. Again, with the band, if you have one, if you don't have one, not a problem. Sit nice and tall, 
nice and tall. Wrap that band if you need to or put little knots in it. And I want you to take your foot out to the side. This foot is, one foot is staying steady. The other one's going to go out to the side. Just take it out to the side and in. And again, if you don't have the band, same motion, sitting tall, out to the side. Those adductors and the abductors. Adductors and abductors, with or without that band. Great for the hip strength. Great, and the other side, out. In, again, with the band if you have it. Foot's here, sitting tall, out. And in sitting tall is really critical, that posture piece. And out, and in, and out, and in. Great, those legs have got to be getting tired because I'm definitely feeling these. Woo, nice. Okay, up you get, put that band down. I'd like you to get to the back of a chair. We've done this in the other workouts. Um, it's just one that I really love, and that's for that hamstring. We talked about that hamstring. You're gonna just curl it up, curl it down. Now, if you happen to have ankle weights at your house, you can put those on, and that's gonna up the intensity of this move. But again, strengthening that hamstring, yet then stretching that hamstring is critical. Sometimes when people walk with a hunch, it's really, it sounds counterintuitive, but it's really the hamstring that's tight. So really make sure you're stretching those hamstrings. So bring it up and bring it down. Bring it up, keeping those knees right next to each other. And let's try the other side, up with a curl. So if you have a weight to put on your ankle, that's just gonna make it a little bit more intense, but not necessary. Because you can probably already feel it, right? Exactly, up and then down. Woo! Feeling the burn there a little bit. Anybody else feeling the burn there? Yes, me too. Okay, standing here, behind that chair, two hands on that chair. I want you to do this for me. Rock up on your tiptoes, rock back onto your heels. You're gonna get those calf muscles. If you're doing lots of walking these days, and you can, you're gonna need those calf muscles. So you're gonna rock up on your toes, how high can you get? And then back onto your heels. Again, and back, and lift. You can really feel that calf muscle right here, right? Bang. It's like you're wearing high heel shoes right here. Get on your high heels and then tip those toes up. Get up nice and high and then tip those toes up. It's a great one, those calf muscles. All right, I got one more with this lower body. You're gonna go like this. Holding onto the chair, you're gonna lift a knee right to hip height. You don't need to do it any higher than that. And you're gonna swoop it back. I want you to try to keep your hips forward, lift, Swoop back. This is also going to challenge your balance, isn't it? Lift. Swoop back. Lift. Swoop back. Holding onto that chair. Keep you stable. Swoop back. Get a really good squeeze of those glute muscles right there on the way back. You have to actively think about squeezing them as you kick it back. Great. Maybe you're not able to lift this very high. That's okay. Let's just see what you can do. And make sure you get the other side. With a knee lift and a kick back. And a knee lift and a kick back. Excellent. You feel that right there in those glute muscles? This is something that you can do also, let's say you're standing at the kitchen counter prepping dinner. Maybe you'll just do the kickbacks. Maybe a few of these while you're chopping up the vegetables for dinner, right? Or you're washing the dishes. The high knee probably wouldn't work, but you can just do those kickbacks. Okay, ready for a little upper body. Let's do this. Ooh, I'm getting warm. You guys getting warm? Make sure you just take, stop and take a little water break. But you're going to need that ball, that stuffed animal, that pillow again, whatever it is that you have. Have a sip of water. Take your break. Get that ball. I want you to put it, oh, here we go, right on the edge. If you're sitting on the edge of that chair, I want you to put that ball right between your knees and hold it in there. Right? You can give it a little bit of squeeze if you want to keep doing a little inner thigh work. I want you to put your hands right on top of this, and I want you to actively press down. Sitting tall, sitting tall. You forgot. Actively push down. You should feel that all through your shoulders and arms as you push into that item as hard as you can and hold it. And just hold it. Sitting tall, breathing, push. Do your arms start to shake a little bit? Mine are shaking. Can you see that? They're a little bit quaky. That is not easy to do. Pushing down, pushing weight into that ball. And hold, take a break. Whew, let's try it again. Press down and hold and hold and hold. Oh, this is big, isn't it? Oh, hold down, stay tall. Wow, a lot of pressure, and all you're doing is 
is pushing, right? That's an isometric exercise. That's great. You're not even holding weights in your hand. It feels like you're holding really heavy weights, doesn't it? It really does for me too. Okay, if you have your band, go get that. If you don't have the band, I'd like you to put one of those little dumbbells or those bottles of water or those cans of soup in each hand. Go get what you have. I'm gonna try this one with the band. You're gonna imagine that you're pulling a bow and arrow. So you're gonna sit nice and tall, belly is in, arms up. If this is a dumbbell, this would be a dumbbell, and you're just gonna pull. Sit tall and pull. Hey, here's a great chance to practice that eye following your hand, right? Way out there and pull. Reach and pull back that bow so you can shoot that arrow. Cupid's arrow. Shoot it right out there and pull. Reach and pull. Keep going. I'm going to show you what it would look like if you were doing it with dumbbells. The dumbbells would look like this. Pull. And pull. With bottles of water, it would look like I had bottles of water in my hand, right? Or cans of soup. And pull. And reach and pull. And let's try the other side. I'll go back to the band. And pull. So are you sitting tall? Just check it. Asking for a friend. Are you sitting tall? You might want to wrap this band around your hand like that and pull. You have to adjust it to get the right amount of tension. It should be a challenge, not too easy. So by wrapping your hand around that band, it's going to make it a little bit tighter. Great. And pull. And pull. Wow. Keep pulling. And do another one over here. Pull. You're going to shoot that arrow. Can we hit the bullseye with that one? What do you think? I'm going to try with the bullseye. I've never been very good at archery, so not very successful with that one, but I'll give it a go. I'm just going to imagine that I'm hitting the bullseye with this one. And pull. Great. Okay, again, if you have that band, holding each end. If not, with your dumbbells. And I want you to pull your arms up here. If you have the band, put a little tension on there. And then bring it right down in front of you. Elbows come right into your side. You're up holding tension on that band. If it's in here, if it's slack like this, you're slacking off. There's no slacking off here. Not at the studio. Pull it down. All the way up, and then pull it down. Keep going, and I'll show you what that looks like with dumbbells. You're here, you can pull it down. Don't let it go behind you. Nothing's gonna be working behind you on this. It's right here. Big reach, pull it down. Big reach, pull it down. With the band, with tension, as much tension as you want to put on that band. And if maybe right now you are doing this just with your hands, that can be a lot of work too. You're still getting the same range of motion. Don't feel like it's not the same if you aren't using weight. You don't have to use weight. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe you're starting with pencils. That's fine. You start with what you need to start with. Right? And maybe because of your shoulders, you can only come to here. That's fine too. You do whatever level. You do you is what I like to say. Your level. Bring it down. Great. Okay, now let's go back and either grab that ball or pillow if you don't want to have a lot of weight. If you want to use more weight, you can use the dumbbell. Maybe just take one and hold each end of it, or bottle water and hold. Bring your arms up overhead. Keep your elbows just in front of you. Go sideways here so you can see that. And bring that weight behind you, and then up. All the way down. Full extension up. Keeping those elbows just in front of you, like that. We're getting the back of the arm. Those bingo arms, we like to call them, right? You want to really get those. So let's do quite a few of these. Now, if you wanted, you could do a weight in each hand. And this way, I just find it's best then to join them together, if you can. Or perhaps, adding weight is too much for you right now. Use that stuff and we'll use that ball. Use a book. You can put anything in your hand for these triceps. Get rid of those bingo arms, as they call them. And you know what? We all get them. That's kind of part of the deal. But let's see what we can do about it. Keep them nice and strong. Great. Work those triceps. Okay. You're going to go back to that ball, that pillow, whatever it is you are using. And you're going to put a hand on each side. Again, let's reset. Nice and tall. Squeeze that ball. Push. Push. Just like we did the press down before it's in your lap. This time you're going to squeeze them. You're going to bring it in close. Take it out. In close. Take it out. Can you feel those muscles working as you apply that pressure to the ball? Yeah. Pretty amazing. That's giving you arms, and biceps, and all across your chest. Squeezing hard. Nice work. In. Let's hold it. Ooh, keep breathing. And out. Hold it. And 
in, squeezing hard. Can you squeeze a little bit harder? You're gonna flatten that pillow. Don't pop that ball. You could even use a balloon if you happen to have a balloon. Just don't squeeze too hard, right? Wow, don't scare anybody. And in. Now to make it harder, what could you do? Squeeze harder, that's right. The more pressure you apply, whoa, I'm feeling that. The more, oh, upper body's gonna get the work. In and out. And in and out. Even just holding it right here and hold it as long as you can, it's gonna give you some great work. You're gonna be feeling those tomorrow. I'm telling you. Alrighty, back to those light weights. Why don't we stand up for this? Now that was one that you could also do standing up, which I should have probably told you, but let's stand up now if you want. And we're gonna uppercut. Punch up. We're kind of boxing now. Swing it up and up. Now this is also something that you could do seated, right? You don't have to be standing. It works either way. That's the beauty about the upper body. You can do it lying on the floor, you can do it sitting in a chair. But if you want to get your heart rate up a little bit more, standing is going to add a little bit extra element for you. So big up, and big up, and big up, big swoop, and swoop it up. Keep it going. Great. Uh huh. Those are good. Are you going to punch somebody? Who are you going to punch there? Be careful. Watch out. Someone might be walking by and be the victim of your big punches. And up. Now, this is also just great without weights or with the weights. Uppercut. And punch. And now let's punch it out this way. And punch. And a little punch. So I'm calm down. I do a little rotation. And I go a little bit to the angle if you can. Maybe your range of motion is here. That's fine too. Keep those arms moving. That's great. Oh yes. You can get strong arms. We need those strong arms. Think about all the things that we do. Opening a jar of pickles. Right? Lifting a bag of groceries. Think of all the things you do during the day that you need those arms for. We gotta keep them strong. Okay, let's go get those biceps. Right here, your elbows are right by your side. Palms are up and then down. And then up and then down. Up and down. That's great. Just keep those elbows right there by your side. Don't let them come in front of you. Don't wanna sneak forward. Don't let them do it. Don't let them do it. We wanna completely isolate that bicep. Now you can also turn your palms this way if you prefer. That one's called the hammer curl, and do it that way. A lot of people find that one to be a little bit easier. Well, let's just keep doing some bicep curls right here. Great. Excellent. Looking good. Keep it going. Almost there. A little bit more. Okay. Let's try this last thing here. Again, grab that band. Woo. Or the dumbbells, right? I want your arms straight out here. You have to figure out what tension to get on that band. One arm stays straight, and I want you to pull the other one as far as you can. Hold it for just a second. Bring it in. That one stays punching right at you. Extend that one. Hold it. And bring it in, alternating. Extend. Now you should be feeling that all through here. Great. Shoulders and your entire arm as you pull it back. Pulling with tension. You see how that band gets nice and long as I stretch it? If I want more tension, I'll make the working area shorter, right? Wow, that makes it a lot harder. And you can get the same effect by using those dumbbells. We're here. Take it in and out. Take it out and in. Great. Trying to keep those arms up at shoulder height. Keep your hips forward right towards that screen. Take these back. Great. Wow, are those arms tired yet? Mine are tired. Truly mine are tired. So I hope that you are too, that we all are in the same boat. We are in the same boat. Alrighty, are you ready to work that balance? Just a couple things for you on balance. We've done this before. A nice long line, nice long line, where you can practice walking. So if you want to put a piece of tape on the floor or look for a seam in the tiles, and just walking, Heel to toe, heel to toe, heel to toe. Now, if you want to make it more tricky, you can try to walk backwards. Heel to toe, heel to toe. And to make it even trickier, try closing one eye. Heel to toe. Closing one eye can change the game on balance. Lighting, wearing sunglasses can change the game. How about backwards, one eye? Now, if you want to be really crazy, you can put a hand against the wall. You can try to close both eyes. It's amazing. We talked last time about trying to brush your teeth like that. 
When you close with one eye, two eyes, dim the lights, those things make balance. Whoa, a way bigger challenge. So give it a little try and see what you can do. Another great thing you can do for balance is to walk on. You might not have one, but a big cushiony mat or couch cushions or some flatter pillows from your bed and lie those out. Practicing walking on an unstable surface. Like here at the studio, I have these mats. So practicing walking on an unstable surface is really going to challenge your balance because your body has to work really hard to stabilize you as you take those steps on something that's not stable. So it could be flatter pillows. Just make sure you're close by to something or someone, right, in case you lose your balance. And again, closing one eye, whoa, closing two eyes, forward and backward, is a really great challenge for your balance. Okay, weighted arm swings. Pick up those dumbbells. I want you to imagine that you're just walking, holding those weights, so you're swinging those arms. I want a nice big swing. Nice big swing. Do you feel how that's like a counterbalance as one leads, one goes behind? When swinging those arms, right? Now let's start walking. You will find that your step, your gait will be longer when you use those arms. It's because you've got better balance when you're using those arms. Adding that weight just adds an extra element of the challenge because you can really feel it. But using those arms as you walk is great for your balance. You can try to go backwards. Use those arms. Walking like this is a lot, a lot more difficult. That's like tightrope walkers, right? They're gonna be out here using those arms for your balance. And walking forward and walking backwards. Swinging those arms, use those arms. Great, ready for a big challenge? Okay, those things I asked you to get that you can step over. I've got my hurdles here. I'm gonna put these on the floor. Move my chair right here. You're gonna put a little bit of space in between them and how much space you have. And we're just gonna practice one of life's hurdles, getting over hurdles, right? So, as we step over, we're gonna to remember to go from heel and then you rock into the toe. And then this one's up here. We step, heel, rock into the toe. Step, heel, make sure you've got the space right, and then rock into the toe. Let's go back the other way. Step, heel, that's a safe step, rock into the toe. Step, heel, rock into the toe, and heel, and rock into the toe. Any height of the hurdle that you have will work perfect for this. Let's say a little sideways, which is really tricky on the balance. You're going to be right here. You're side to the step. You're going to step, transfer your weight to that leg, bring them together, be stable. Step, transfer the weight, bring them together, be stable. Step, transfer the weight together, and stable. When you're being very mindful of that weight transfer, you feel strong in that leg. Together, be stable. Step, transfer the weight, then this leg is light and ready to come up and stable. Make sure you're stable before you head to the next one. Transfer the weight, come up, and be stable. Excellent. Step, transfer the weight, come up, be stable. Even if you don't have anything right now to step over, just imagine that you do, and do the same motions with a nice big step and over. All right, put those little hurdles away. Overcame some major hurdle obstacles today, people. Look at us. Okay, go get that broom or that stick or whatever you have. Weighted bar, if I chance you have one. And we're gonna do a little kayaking. So, sitting nice and tall with your hands on your stick. Nice and tall, are you ready for it? Okay, your arms are gonna go off to the right, right, paddle over here. I want you to take your knees and your head to the left and then switch it other way. Sitting right at the edge of that chair, working that balance on this way and off to the other side. So the knees and the head are to the right, your paddle, your oar is off to the left, your broom, whatever it is, your mop your wooden dowel from the shed, and switch, and go. So you can take it nice and slow. When you're ready, you can speed it up. Switch with the rotation. Make sure you're right at the edge of that chair, and big switch, and big switch. Knees off to the angle, arms way over here. Eyes following the knees, and go, and go. 
Great. And big. How do you feel? How are you feeling? These are a lot of great big moves, and I hope that you'll go back and do some of them. I'm not done with you yet, though. But you kind of pick up those weights that you have, whether they are dumbbells or bottled water or are they Kansas soup? What else do you have? It's pretty amazing how people can really be creative when they need to. I've heard about people using paint cans, cans of paint, the little tape on those handles. What a great idea to add some resistance if you don't have weights. A shopping bag filled with books. There's always something if you're really creative and when you really want to exercise enough, you can find a way to make it happen. Now listen, here's something that I'm not doing a lot of anymore. I want you guys to remember this too. Grocery shopping. When was the last time you were at the grocery store? Right? It's been a long time. So I'm going to take us on a little walk down memory lane to the grocery store. We're going to use this as a little bit of a cardio, get the heart rate, have some memories at the grocery store, maybe a couple laughs, and we're going to go on a little adventure. So, well, we just went to the refrigerator. Let's go to the refrigerator. Looks like we're out of food, Mildred. We better get to the grocery store. Let's get our jacket on. Now, if you're having those weights in your hand, this is going to make this harder. You can also do it without weights. Put your jacket on. Let's get the car keys. Let's go to the car. Walk to your car, because we're going to the grocery store. Are you in the car? We're in the car. Okay, open the car door. Let's sit into the car. Oh, let's do it again. Let's sit into the car. Keep moving. Sit into the car. Ooh, that seat's hot. Sit into the car. It must be in Palm Springs where it's hot. Seat is hot. Woo. Seat is hot. Woo. Wow. Okay. Let's get in. We're in that car. Let's put that seat up on. Reach across. Reach across. Reach across. Do your range of motion. Reach across. Put that seatbelt on. You know what? This is a special car. There's a seatbelt on this side too. Reach up. Pull that seatbelt. Put it on you. Put it on. Need that seatbelt. Okay, are you ready? Grab that steering wheel. Look around. Look around. We're getting ready to turn. Back it up out of the driveway. Look around. Okay, here we go. And we're driving. Arms are up. And we're driving. We're going to move our hips so it's like our car is driving because we're bouncing along down this little road. If the weights start to feel too heavy, just put them down. But you're driving the car. Head to the grocery store. Are you Safeway, Fred Meyer, QFC, Kroger's? Where do you grocery shop? Go ahead and say it. I want to hear it. All right. Buy Mart, Kmart, Walmart. What's another grocery store? Maybe you go to the little local market. Well, we're almost there. We're almost there. Still driving. All right. Put on the brakes. Let's get out of the car. We gotta get up out of the car. Come on, let's get again. Up out of the car. Get up out of the car. And up out of the car. Did you take your seatbelt off? I hope so. And break that seatbelt trying to get out of there. Keep moving. Keep moving. Okay, we're out of the car. We gotta go oh, reach in. Grab your shopping bags. One at a time. You need your shopping bags. Big reach. They don't give us bags at this store. We have to bring our own shopping bags, and we're going to need a lot of shopping bags, so reach for them. Lots of shopping bags. There we go. Those nice reusable shopping bags. They're lovely. Glad you bought those. All righty. Let's walk to the grocery store. We're walking in. We are excited to do a little shopping. We got our cart. Let's get our cart, and we're going to push it. Arms are out. Arms are out. Get your pushing. Let's push that shopping cart. Uh-huh, it's the big one, because you got a lot of groceries to buy today, right? Okay, we're walking nice and tall, holding on to that car, just back and forth. If you've got those weights in your hands, you're up here, right? You can pretend like that's the back of the car, and we're just going to keep on walking. Okay, we're going to check our list. Looks like we need to get some spaghetti, so we're going to stop and we're going to reach up to the top shelf. Spaghetti. We need more spaghetti. More spaghetti. More that's right. Oh, those other wheels on the other side look good too. Let's grab those. Put them in the cart. Grab those. Little spaghetti noodles, little pasta. Can do a little Italian dinner tonight, maybe. Grabbing those noodles. Yes. Oh boy, I see the spaghetti sauce is even up higher. Reach up higher. Put it in the cart. Get the sauce. Put it in the cart. There we go. You need two hands for that because it's heavy. Reach up high. Oh boy, there's the garlic one over there. We want that one too. Put it in. Can't go without that and reach. Big walk, big reach, big reach. That should do it. Let's, let's just keep on walking. It's like we're feeding an army with all this food. Woo, okay. Who knew grocery shopping was so much work? I kind of don't miss it. 
I don't miss it. We need to go to the bread department. We gotta get some bread. The bread's right here, so we're gonna grab the bread, put it in the cart. Grab some bread. Is that the whole wheat? Get the chef sourdough, right? What kind of bread do you like? Nine grain, old fashioned white. Oh, well, let's grab the bagels from over here. Lots of bagels. We love the bagels. Maybe some English muffins. Yes, for sure. Keep going. Okay, we've got the bread. Let's rent our cart. Uh oh, there's some kids playing in this aisle. Someone's not watching their kids. We're going to have to zoom around them. So we'll zigzag around those kids with our cart. We got a big cart. They better look out. Zoom it around. Keep moving. Keep those arms going. We're still going. Wow, okay. We need to do some baking. I was thinking about making some cookies, so we gotta get to the baking aisle. Here we are. Okay, load in some chocolate chips. Big twist. Big twist. Big twist. Oh, and over here, the baking soda. So convenient that they have all the baking supplies on one aisle, isn't it? Load them in. Oh, we need the flour. Where's the flour? Down low. Oh, get the flour. Bring it up. Why do they put those big bags of flour on the bottom shelf every time? Woo! Make sure when you're getting down to get there that you're not bending it over this way, right? Bend at those knees, keep your chest up. Oh, we need more than that. Oh, on the other side, let's go get that flour. There we go. Oh, they're heavy. Lift those big bags of flour. Put them in that cart. Put them in that cart. Wow. Okay, let's go. We gotta get some produce. Grocery shopping takes so long. Can't believe this. It's been here forever. And we're walking. And we're walking. Pushing that cart. Get those arms up. Pushing that cart. Okay. Here we are. Let's go get one of those plastic bags. Plastic bag. Tear that plastic bag. Tear that plastic bag. Sometimes it's hard to get those plastic bags off that little rack, isn't it? Pull it down and shake it open. Shake it open. Got to get it nice and open and shake and shake the bag. We got to put our produce in the bag, right? Then we'll have to take it home and wash it. But right now we just gotta open up that bag so we can put it in the bag. All right, let's go pick some apples. Choose some apples. Choosing the apples, reach up here. Big reach. What kind of apples are you getting? Gala, ooh, the Cosmic Crisp, the new one from Washington that's so good. Mmm, Granny Smith, ooh, I like that. What's your favorite apple? Cameo, what is it, Fuji? What's your favorite apple? Let's hear it. All right, we need some carrots. Put those in the bag, put it in the car. Let's go, open up another bag. Carrots, carrots, that's funny, this place has carrots, single carrots, so let's pluck those carrots. Pull those carrots. You can do this without weight, you're plucking those carrots. Pull them into you. We need all these carrots. Carrots are good for your eyes, my mom used to tell me. Eat those carrots, Susie, you'll have good eyesight. Put those carrots in the bag. Ooh, over here, walk on over, grab some avocados. Oh, I love avocados, scoop the avocados. I do this to get avocado because I love avocados so much. Gonna use big arms, big arms. Oh, okay. Oh, we better get one onion. That's gonna be important with our dinner, right? Get the onion. Get the onion. Oh no! All the onions are falling off the counter. They're falling. They were all stacked in that nice pyramid, and they're falling. We gotta keep getting them. We gotta pick them up. Catch an onion. Keep going. Catch that onion. Oh, have you ever had that happen where you knock one thing and then they all start rolling in the middle of the produce department? That is so crazy. Well, the onions are falling. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Get those onions, that's embarrassing. Let's pick them all up. Gathering all the onions, stay down nice and low to get those onions. See how my chest is staying up though, right? But I'm bending those knees, gathering those onions. We're not gonna leave a mess here. We don't do that. Pick them up. Oh no, the water thing comes on to keep all the produce fresh. We gotta push away the water. It's coming down on us like a shower. Move those arms. <laughs> Have you ever been caught in that? It starts like a thunderstorm, it's so it warned you that it's coming, but we didn't hear that it was coming. And the water is coming down so fast, we're getting soaking wet, soaking wet. I don't know why we don't just move. Well, that's a great idea. Let's move out of the produce. Let's go. Get your cart. Let's go. Woo, water pouring all over me. Push your cart. Push your cart. Let's go to the freezer aisle. I know what I'm craving. What are you craving in the freezer aisle? Say it. Ice cream. Let's go find it. Okay, big, huge door. Ooh, maybe I want this one. Oh, big future. Oh, it's a sliding door. Slide that door. Slide the door. Slide the door. Open it because now we're gonna look for the chocolate ice cream. We're looking. I'm getting chocolate. What kind are you getting? Vanilla? That's kind of boring. How about strawberry? Or chocolate chip mint? That's what my kids like. Let's get that ice cream. Do you see it anywhere? Side to side. We're looking for that ice cream. 
Where's that chocolate? There it is. Grab that ice cream. I think I'll grab a vanilla. Maybe a strawberry as well. How about Rocky Road? Ooh, pecan. Anything with a pecan is good. Grab that ice cream. Get in your cart. Oh, oh, frozen vegetables. Shut that freezer. Shut the freezer. Shut the freezer. We gotta go back this way. Walking backwards. Back here. Okay. Open this freezer. And open the freezer. And open the freezer. Nice. I need some frozen vegetables. I'd like to have some frozen peas. I mean, I just, I'll put peas in anything. I love some peas. Grab some peas and some peas. Ooh, the peas up there. I like that kind. Those little sweet petite ones that are frozen. Let's grab them. They're up high. Bring them down. Ooh, are you getting windy yet? Because I am. Okay, we've got our vegetables. Let's get our cart. Shut the freezer. Shut the freezer. Don't leave that freezer door open. You ever seen someone do that? That's not good. Here we go. Okay, cart. Let's go get in line. Oh, it looks like there's a bunch of people coming. Can we go faster? Can you get faster to that line? Move as fast as you can. Get in line. Get in line. We're almost there. Oh, we got there. We're so happy we made it. We're in line. We're just going to stand here and wait. Maybe we're going to read the magazine, move in our hips because we're so excited. Oh, no. You didn't forget it. Potato chips? You forgot the potato chips? Get your cart. Let's go. Fast. we got to hurry because... The guys, we have to get back in the line. It took us so long to get there. Okay, there's some potato chips. Grab them. I could grab potato chips for days from everywhere. Grab this one. Grab that one. Grab this one. Grab that one. What kind are they? Doritos. Fritos. Oh, what are they? Basic potato chips. Barbecue. Ranch. Sour cream and onion. Salt and pepper. Oil and vinegar. What kind of chips did you grab? Okay, we got enough chips. That's enough chips. Gotta get big. Come on. Let's go. Back. Get your car. Back here. Got to hurry in line. Hurry to get in line. Keep moving. Get in line. Oh, we're in line. Happy hips because we were in line. Oh, we got to unload our groceries. Everything. Everything. From the cart into the conveyor belt. From the cart into the conveyor belt. From the cart. I remember the day when they would do this for you. They don't do it like that anymore. We got to move over to this side. From the cart. I'm in the way here. From the cart onto the belt. Unloading all those groceries. And now we're going to wait for them. And we're going to pay. We're going to push the buttons and pay, and pay, and pay, and we're paying, and we're waiting, and we're gonna pick up those bags, put them in our cart, pick it up, put it in the cart, we're almost there, put them in the cart, oh my goodness, we gotta take that cart to the car, back to the car, back to the car, oh, open the door, sit down in the car, sit down in the car, seatbelt on, seatbelt on, and now we're driving. Wow, that was, a big adventure to the grocery store. I'm exhausted. I hope you're exhausted. You know what I'm gonna do when I get home? Wash my hands. That's the first thing I'm gonna do, right? Because that's what we need to do. But now, we got all these groceries. We gotta put them away. But I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. I hope you enjoyed this workout. I hope you got a little bit of a sweat. I know that I did. I hope you are staying strong and healthy and moving your body and enjoying these videos. It gives me a lot of happiness to give that to you, knowing that some of you are just stuck where you are right now and you can't get out, be with your friends and family and do the things that you love to do. So this gives me great joy to be there for you. Please be well, take care, let me know when you need more and I'll provide it for you. Love to you all. See you soon.